Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing about how to solve a system of linear equations. What do we mean by a system of linear equations? Well, to put simply that you have uh, n variables and n equations and you have uh, say equations are for example given in this form that you have some constant multiplied by the variable plus another constant multiplied by the variable and so on. So you have uh, such uh, system of equations and uh, we want to solve it. One way to solve such a system of linear equations uh, is that convert these algebraic equations into a matrix form. How can we do that? To put simply that we have arranged the A11, A12 in a matrix A which uh, is n by n matrix. n is the rows and n are number of n are the columns of this matrix and where all the variables x we arranged in a matrix n by 1 where n number of rows and 1 number of column. And same way we have arranged b entries in a n by 1 matrix. Or we can also say that ax equal to b and if we want to solve equation 3 x equal to b for x we can simply solve it uh, using equation 4 which says that x equal to a inverse a inverse b. Now think about the inverse operation of the matrix A. Think about if you have n equal to say 1000. Okay. So how big uh, this matrix would be and how much computation we would need for calculating the in inverse. It's a quite uh, computationally intensive job. So is there any other way that we can solve the system of linear equations for x? Okay. So we can get the all variables x and we have to do very minimal computation. Okay. Now another thing to note here that when we are going to compute the a, we have to uh, divide uh, uh, big, big divisor. Um, you, you need to calculate all determinants and what not the total procedure to compute the inverse. Inverse of a matrix is a uh, quite computationally intensive job. But there is a technique which is called LU decomposition. So what is LU decomposition in simple sense is that you convert that big A matrix into two parts. One is L and one is U are multiplied together. And what is L and what is U? It's simply L means lower triangular matrix and U means upper triangular matrix. Very simple. And uh, once you have uh, this uh, A converted into lower triangular and upper triangular matrices, you can simply represent the whole system of equations as LU x equal to B as in equation 6. And then you can calculate by forward substitution Ly if we call say ux, the, if we call it y okay, for time being a variable y or a vector of variables y1, y2 up to yn. So if we calculate Ly equal to b and then we can calculate ux equal to y. It's very simple, right? And um, simply L lower triangular matrix as you can see all the entries above the diagonal are 0 and in the uh, upper triangular matrix all the entries below the diagonal are 0. So once we have such a, a matrix we can easily compute uh, the uh, x variables and if we want to write it in a uh, matrix form we can write it more simpler form that Ly equal to B, okay, you can represent it by this lower triangular matrix Y equal to B. Now here notice that at each row you are calculating one variable and in this ok 
okay so let's say for uh, first row you have just one entry in this uh, matrix all other are zero and you have this one variable so if you want to represent it by the equation y1 is simply b1 divided by l21 so y1 will be simply b1 divided by l11 so this is l1 okay this is l11 this is just a typing mistake okay so b1 would be simply sorry y1 would be simply b1 divided by l11 all right now if you say notice uh, y2 y2 is simply uh, l21 multiplied by y1 plus l22 multiplied by y2 and you already know the y1 from this step first so you substitute the value of the y1 to calculate the value of the y2 how easy it is you don't have to you know calculate inverse of a matrix good so far so good and in the same way once we have these uh, y variables we can calculate the x variables if we want to represent it in equation form, we can simply say that uh, L11 y y1 equal to b1, L21 y2, L22 y2 equal to b2 and so on. Same way for the u. Good. And uh, if we want to write a computer program for this simple system uh, and we want to represent in a form of subscript, we can say L y i by this equation 9 and uh, x i by this equation 10 good so far so good now notice here that uh, we can get the l11 l21 and we our idea is to make the all entries of the a matrix above the diagonal 0 for the l lower triangular matrix and same way for the upper triangular matrix but we are not controlling by which element we should divide to um, because we, we got to divide some somewhere to make the entries uh, other than l110 in the first row so by which entry we should divide okay think about if our divisor is a very low number uh, then we, we will suffer with a truncation error and our result of division by computer program will not be right. So to avoid these such situations, uh, what we do, we have a technique called LUP where P represents a pivot element and we call it a decomp LUP decomposition. So idea is simple that uh, the PA, a permutation matrix or pivot elements matrix multiplied by A equal to LU. And then simply LUX equal to P multiplied by B. And what is a P? Simply permutation matrix that essentially tells us by which element we should be dividing in a row. All right. And other things are uh, same as before what we did in LU decomposition. Okay. And uh, same thing now here. See, no, notice here in the LUP de decomposition, you are making the, uh, the diagonal elements 1, okay. And uh, here this is B pi 1, B pi 2, pi is nothing but representing the element in the PV, P multiplied by, by B matrix. So this one, okay. So that's the trick here with the LUP decomposition and that trick is very useful. Now we have just avoided uh, those sort of uh, truncation error and essentially we can uh, work on any kind of uh, matrix by this LUP decomposition method great 
and as uh, same way we can write uh, equation for uh, y in a subscript form which is useful which will be useful in our algorithm and same way for the x. Now let us talk about the algorithm ok. So, LUP solve here this uh, algorithm is assuming that you have already uh, L lower triangular matrix upper triangular matrix and a permutation matrix and B and this algorithm will give you the x variable and how we can decompose the LU simply LU decomposition by this algorithm all right. This is a very straightforward algorithm if you pay attention to all these steps very simple steps four loops and uh, nothing much. Um, so, we are going to be solving uh, or applying this algorithm on an example ok. Other things are just a kick good let us go ahead. So, we, we saw the LU decomposition in the same way we can write for LUP decomposition when we have the pivot element by this uh, algorithm all right. Now, so earlier we were discussing about why do we need pivoting. So, let us take an example why do we need pivoting. Think about we have been given a matrix a very small 2 by 2 matrix in this form where um, one entry is 10 to the power minus 4 a very low number, low number ok. And if we want to solve this equation uh, by hand in a simple way or take the inverse or just simply solve you know two equation two variables you will get x1 and x2 these values ok. And now if you are, if you want to apply the LU decomposition method what is going to happen let us try L u and uh, forward substitution we got the y1 y2 and the backward substitution so the x1 x2 y1 y2 if we solve uh, if we solve this forward substitution then we can calculate for y1 y2 and these values will come y1 1 y2 minus 1 into 10 to the power 4 and if we put the values of y into the next equation here in this equation we put the values of y. So, we got the values of uh, x and x 1 is 0 and x 2 is 0. Well, whoa, whoa, this is not right what happened here. So, see our method failed here. So, something is uh, not right with the regular LU decomposition. So, we need a pivoting we need a, a matrix uh, where we know by which element to divide right. Let us take an example so, as you can see here uh, we have uh, a matrix A and B and we want to calculate or compute A x vector x which will have x 1 x 2 ok. All right. So, we will have x 1, x 2 and x 3. Cool. So, now the idea for LUP decomposition is that uh, we pivot off, we pivot off the diagonal element. Now, while uh, pivoting off the diagonal element, we want to make sure that uh, we pivot off the largest number in, in that uh, uh, in that column. Uh, so, now otherwise we would end up in truncation error and uh, numerical issues. So, the idea is that uh, if we do not have a larger number and we see there is a in any other column there is a 
larger number, then we just swap those uh, rows in which, so let's say for example here, one is less than seven and seven is the largest number in this column. So we swap the third row with the first row, that's the very first step. And then we make uh, this uh, first entry on the diagonal one make others uh, zero for uh, depending on whether it's L, L or U, okay. So let's see the first step factorizing P A equal to L U. So swap row 1 with the row 3 the permutation step and uh, we would get a new uh, matrix A after swapping because now we have the largest uh, number on that uh, the first uh, column and first row and very simple next we just uh, eliminate other entries how we eliminate this four and uh, we eliminate uh, this one because we want to have uh, one l and one u how we do that well very simple so after applying that operation so first is that uh, we take off this uh, the 7. So we divide entries by 7 okay? as in the previous step we saw that we divide we divide okay, by 7 and what is the entry here in the first uh, in the first column second row is 4. So 4 divided by 7. And multiplied by the row one. So that way you will have zero here, and which will make your U matrix. Okay, and in L matrix we would have simply four divided by seven entry. Right. So how did we do that? Whatever was our uh, multiplier. For the second row that becomes our L part that is 4, 4 by 7. Okay. So if we say take this 4 that is means second row minus 4 by 7 okay, and multiplied by the row above that is 7. So we make this entry 0. So this you may think of its L and this you may think of its U and remember we are doing operation here. Okay. So now this first row is untouched for U matrix okay. and in L matrix we have 1 on diagonal and rest elements 0 and in the first column we have made all entries other than the very first element 0 okay. and here we have entries. So idea is very simple that we are trying to trying to get L and U with the 1 on the diagonal. Now that is the first step we have fixed this one. Okay. Now we need to focus on that uh, this matrix in the second step okay. and we want to make this 3 wise 3 divided by 7 1. So if we divide, uh, we need to search in this uh, in this column that uh, whether there is any other bigger entry than that. So there is a bigger six by seven. So we swap, we swap these two rows. Okay. So we swap row number two and row number three in the second step. Okay. 
and um, we also swap the and the permutation matrix so that we will get the new permutation matrix okay so after doing that operation what we have here uh, we have swapped okay so as you can see here the entries swapped now we have this bigger element for the inner matrix and we have also swapped this uh, the rows here for the permutation matrix as you can see here okay so now second step is the same repeating step that we want to make it one okay so how do we do that very simple and rest of the entry is zero okay so row 3 minus half row 2 row 3 minus half row 2 so that will make it 0 okay and we apply that to every entry right so let's do that and we arrive at this matrix so as you can see here our l matrix is changed and our u matrix we have all entries below the diagonal 0 in u and all entries above the diagonal 0 in l okay great um, very simple so far now we can apply the second step that is forward substitution which means that l y equal to permutation matrix which we got resultant permutation matrix after the first step multiplied by the b okay so let's do that okay L which is R this L and then the Y and our permutation matrix and B is equal to so 1 divided by 23 here then what's going to happen on the second row the 1 divided by 7 and then this one multiplied by 19 comes here okay good and we can calculate the values of uh, y1 y2 and y3 very simple see y1 multiplied by 1 is equal to 23 now here 1 by 7 multiplied by y1 plus 1 multiplied by y2 equal to 7. So, if we think of in terms of equation at the step number uh, row number 2, so that is 1 by 7 multiplied by y1 plus 1 multiplied by y2 this this one multiplied by y2 here is equal to what is the entry here 7 okay so now y2 would be simply 7 minus 1 divided by 7 and y1 and we put the value of the y1 and here you get the y2 and in the same way you can <coughs> put the values of y1 and y2 to get the value of the y3 and the final step is uh, again very simple 
the backward substitution. So, we got the values of y1, y2, y3 in the previous step and in this step we just simply substitute the values of y's and get the values of x1, x2, x3 in a backward manner. What it means in a backward manner is that you calculate the value of x3 first. So, see in the last row you have just one element here in the a uh, in your u matrix. So, 4 x 3 is equal to 4. So, x 3 equal to 4 divided by 4 and you put this x 3 value in into the backward into uh, the second row which would be simply you can represent this row saying says 6 by 7 x 1 6 by 7 x 2 is the the x uh, x 1 becomes 0 because 0 multiplied by x 1 is 0. So, 6 by 7 x 2 plus 20 by 7 x 3 is equal to 26 by 7. and uh, you put the value of, of the x3 in this equation which is the value 1 basically. So, you put the value 1 here and uh, finally, you solve this equation and you get the value of the x2. And once you have the values of the x3 and x2, you can put these two values in this equation. So, x2 and x3 you put the value. So, it would be 7 x1 plus 8 x2 plus 1 x 3 ok is equal to 23 and this is nothing but uh, represented by this last equation you get the values of x 1. Now, it was very simple, right? And you get uh, the final x vector as 2, 1, 1. x1 one is 2, x2 two is 1, x3 is 1. So, thank you very much, guys. Thank you for liking and subscribing the professor on YouTube. Hope you are enjoying uh, these lectures. Thank you very much for, for your comments, uh, suggestions, feedback. And we are excited to uh, create some new lectures based on your feedbacks. So, do not forget to send your feedbacks uh, for any other topic you like us to uh, create lectures for it. Uh, 